Every year, retailers and manufacturers end up with billions of pounds of excess unsold inventory that they're sending straight to landfills. And for apparel, they often burn it. And it's creating more than 5 billion pounds of waste a year in the U.S. and over 15 million metric tons of carbon dioxide. That's equivalent to all of the trash produced by 5 million Americans a year, or 5,600 fully loaded Boeing 747s. In Germany, a recent study found that 10 to 20 percent of clothing goes unsold, an estimated 230 million items there each year. And the amount of inventory waste is only growing as Amazon leads the way in bringing more shoppers online, where the rate of returns is 25 percent, compared to just 9 percent for in-store purchases. Returns are piling up as walls of shame in warehouses everywhere. We wanted to find out, why is this problem so big? And what are major players like Amazon doing to cut back on the wasted inventory clogging our landfills and our planet? We have spoken to over 120 retailers, and over half of them have said that they are uh, disposing of over 25% of their customer returns. It's actually uh, cheaper for them to just throw them away. To understand why, you have to look at the complicated journey a returned item takes, from the moment you bring it back potentially all the way to a landfill. It goes back through distribution center, where goods can sit for a while, and then they end up going to liquidators and vendors, and then they get passed down to smaller regional wholesalers, and then they go from there to dollar stores, pawn shops, thrift stores, uh, eBay, uh, mom and pops at flea markets, and then they get to consumers in certain cases. And when, when goods are uh, cheaper and used and have to go through that whole process, often it doesn't make economical sense, so they end up in landfills. And other types of items, if it's larger items, like a used TV going through that process, it's, it has a high likelihood of, of being damaged and destroyed and ends up in a landfill as well. It's this expensive, complicated reverse logistics that keep more products from being resold or recycled. Most organizations don't really inspect every single item and say, is this resellable, is it not? What level of effort would it take to get this back into a resellable condition? And that's why companies take kind of the easy route out and just say, well, let's just destroy this, and that way we can do that in bulk, and it's not taking up valuable time and resources from the organization that has to do other things. And some types of products can't be resold, like open, over-the-counter medicines. And some simply have no resale value, like DVDs sold on the international market. Any DVD, once it's returned, the resale value is, is negligible to zero. And so in those cases, you didn't want that to flood the market and become a, a zero price point to compete with your brand new product. But at the same time, you didn't want to pay for it to return. So in those cases, we had markets where it was 100% in-market destruction, meaning we didn't take a single unit back. Amazon and other retailers won't publicly disclose how much inventory they destroy. Let's acknowledge just for a fact that there's a lot of product waste. Obviously that's true. We know that companies are getting rid of a lot of products because they're either out of date or they don't work, they're unfixable, and that adds to landfill mass. So the question would be for organizations is, well, how do we reduce that? Amazon's answer is that it launched a program called Fulfilled by Amazon Donations in September. Donation is now the default option for all sellers when they choose how to dispose of their unsold or unwanted products stored in Amazon warehouses in the U.S. and the U.K. The donations program was launched after CBS reported earlier this year that a single Amazon facility sent 293,000 products to a garbage dump in just nine months. After a French documentary found Amazon tossed 3 million TVs in 2018, the country vowed to outlaw the destruction of unsold consumer products by 2023. And the EU has an overarching packaging waste directive that sets guidelines for limiting waste from manufacturers and retailers. But in the U.S., experts say retailers are up against a relatively unregulated infrastructure around waste and recycling. We have a waste infrastructure, particularly in the U.S., that is not consistent. There are no national recycling laws in place. There are some statewide initiatives, of course, but they are sporadic. Apparel has the biggest problem with excess inventory, in part because of the current trend of fast fashion. Apparel is a $2 trillion market, uh, which is the largest consumer vertical. So it's much bigger than movies, bigger than music, bigger than books, although 30% of it never gets sold. And a lot of that ends up in landfills. In 2014 compared to 2010, the average customer bought 60% more clothing, but kept each garment half as long. H&M reported in 2018 that it had $4.3 billion worth of unsold clothing, 
up 7% from the year before. It incinerates some of those clothes. Much of this is because unsold inventory is pulled to make way for the latest fashions. So we've moved from a two season fashion year to a 50 season fashion year. New clothes coming out every week. You don't want that, that prior season product available. It's going to really cannibalize you know, your next wave of sales. Burberry famously revealed last year that it incinerated unsold and returned products worth 28.6 million British pounds, a practice it's since stopped. So the reason that very often these companies will incinerate products that are perfectly fine and good is because they don't want them out there in the marketplace, right? They don't want the brand perceived as low cost. So examples, a lot of luxury sellers. A lot of luxury sellers will not allow their items to be in like a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls because they feel like, right or wrong, that it degrades the quality of the brand or the view of the brand. But in some cases, incineration can actually be more sustainable than dumping clothes in a landfill. In H&M's case, they have been recovering energy from that incineration process. So there are power plants, for example, that use energy from burning apparel products to input into their power plant. Another useful endpoint for all this apparel and other unused inventory is secondary markets. This includes foreign countries, where unused goods are often donated or sold at steep discounts. World Vision is a major nonprofit that helps retailers donate their excess inventory. It says it received 84,000 pallets of goods and shipped them to 33 countries last year. Even in secondary markets, though, the waste can pile up, especially after China implemented its so-called national sword policy in 2018, limiting how much waste countries can export to Chinese landfills. Southeast Asia in particular, has borne the brunt of this where waste is being shipped to these countries and you then start finding out that there are heaps of waste garments piling up on islands in Southeast Asia because they also don't have the infrastructure to deal with this volume. Other secondary markets for unused goods to go are discount retailers like TJ Maxx and outlet stores where returned and unsold merchandise is sent in bulk, marked down and sold again and the online equivalent of this. So you can go to some of these third-party companies and, and, and buy things that have been returned, uh, kind of almost like a salvage process. And the really fascinating thing is some of that ends up back on the Amazon marketplace. Amazon even has a separate program called Amazon Warehouse, which sells renewed goods at a discounted rate. And some retailers, like Apple, even include mandates about recycling and reusing in its contracts. Any of Apple's products, which are high value, and that's often what drives that in the first place, have to be returned to Apple, and they actually reuse as many of the components as possible. It also makes sure that their brand is not undermined by making its way onto secondary black markets. H&M and others, like Patagonia, have also started programs to help more used clothing find a second home. They will take trade-in Patagonia items, uh, give you credit for it, and then they'll, they'll repost it for sale on their Warnware site. And then there are other companies like Nike that have really been uh, innovating on designing their product for circularity so that uh, it's easier to recycle them and reuse them again. The take-back systems in retailers such as H&M, where you, you're encouraged to take back your clothes, some of those will be put towards insulation for car seats, for housing. Returns are a major reason why the apparel industry struggles so much with wasted inventory. So in the apparel industry, they probably have it the hardest because it can be upwards of more than 50% or even nearly 100% of purchases are returned because you're buying two or three of the same item and then keeping the one that fits or looks best on you. 65-70% of what we return uh, is because of fit and or style related things. Boston-based TrueFit is trying to help with just that by using data and machine learning to better match a customer's fit and preferences so they order and return fewer items. Our role in this was to organize billions of dollars of transactions from the retailers and you know, thousands and thousands of brands uh, feeding us their product data and consumers creating us profile. We have 130 million uh, registered TrueFit users now who have, have, have shared with us, like, here's what I care about. TrueFit works with major retailers like Walmart and Target. Returns are going to go down and people are going to keep what they love because we're going to figure that out better, right? And the combination of both of those two things should make the production more efficient and so you have less going into a landfill. Nike has a feature on its app that uses your phone's camera to scan your feet with 13 data points to suggest the right shoe size. 
M. Taylor uses a similar concept. The Custom Clothing Fit app uses your phone's camera to measure 17 different body points that it claims are 20% more accurate than a professional tailor. And there's in-person options like FormCut, where customers get clothing size measurements after stepping into a 3D body scanner. Amazon is also tackling high apparel returns with Prime Wardrobe, a program launched in 2018 that lets you try up to eight items before you buy them. A similar program is Rent the Runway, which eliminates returns by renting out clothing. And H&M just unveiled a line of conscious exclusive dresses and skirts available for rent. Google is also leveraging its massive amount of data to help its retail partners, like Macy's, Target, and Kohl's, understand what online shoppers want and cut down on returns and waste. Google, on an aggregate level, has an understanding in a country or a geography what people are looking for. So getting that forecast right, how much product do you need, what should you be buying, what store should you be allocating it to. Now, a handful of small companies have sprung up to help with the waste and help retailers save money. Optoro is one of them. It collects data on why returns come back, then optimizes next steps for its retail partners like Best Buy, Ikea, Target, and Staples. Real time, it captures the value of that product in those markets, and then it captures the data on how much it would cost to get the good to each specific channel. And, and making sure that each item is connected to its next best home and not a landfill. Some smaller companies have even made a business out of taking wasted inventory off bigger companies' hands and disposing of it for them. One such company, Stericycle, estimates it's destroyed or recycled 80 million pounds of unsold items for manufacturers and retailers. And some big names, like Nordstrom, are experimenting with end-to-end -end automatic sorting and inventory distribution, which it hopes will mean more efficient reselling of returned items, cutting down on wasted inventory. Historically, you may find that solutions are very much segmented for fulfillment as distinct from sortation, as distinct from returns. And here at Nordstrom, we're taking a holistic approach for end-to-end -end solutions. And we're really excited to be the first retailer to adopt this combined technology. Amazon is also using robots to increase the efficiency of its distribution centers and eventually reduce waste. It also has a massive amount of data on customer behavior. Amazon says its systems are constantly evaluating what its customers will want to buy, placing orders with vendors to ensure it stocks the proper amount of inventory. Their technology can make predictions that says, hey, this product, there's going to be others that want it. There's demand for it. So if we get it back, and we get it back in the region where it was shipped, we actually think we're going to be able to ship it to a buyer in that same spot. From automation to algorithms, the good news is big tools are being developed to help retailers and suppliers find more efficiency, and hopefully one day send fewer of their excess goods to landfills. The trends are going in the right direction. There's great brands that are helping to, to lead the way, and there's regulations in, in certain cases, which we've seen more, more so in Europe, that have also helped guide people in the right direction. If we can provide as consumers a demand for those more sustainable products, it becomes easier for them to do those jobs in improving those systems.